So if I was to ask you, why does the carbon atom in an alkane form four covalent bonds? I imagine the answer I would get would be because carbon's in group four, it has four outer electrons, and therefore it can form four covalent bonds. And you can see that very clearly in these two diagrams. So if we look at the displayed formula for methane first, the carbon electrons are represented as these green dots. We've got one, two, three, four, and that backs up what we've just said. And then if we just have a look at the propane molecule on the right hand side of the board, we've got this carbon here with four green dots around it. The carbon in the middle with these four open circles around it and the carbon on the right hand side with four green dots. So that explanation Carbon can form four covalent bonds because it's in group four, kind of makes sense. But then if we look at the electronic configuration for carbon in terms of sublevels, we've got a bit of a problem. And that's because this is carbon here. We've actually only got two unpaired electrons. So how on earth is it possible for four covalent bonds to form? Well, to explain this, we need to bring in something known as hybridization. So I'm representing the subshells now on an energy ladder. So we've got the 1s subshell lowest in energy, and then 2s, and then 2p. So what happens is one of these 2s electrons actually becomes excited. And so that gives us something that looks like this and you can now see that we've actually got four unpaired electrons the only problem with this at the moment is we're not going to get four identical single covalent bonds because this electron here is lower in energy and yet these three are slightly higher in energy so what we need to do is we need to create four identical orbitals all at the same energy. So we get something that looks like this. So what's happened is the the s the 2s orbital and those three p orbitals have kind of blended together and form four identical regions of space or orbitals around the nucleus. And then each unpaired electron can actually sit in one of those orbitals. And so we call these hybrid orbitals because they've been um, formed by the blending or merging together of different orbitals. And the term that we give to this process, this is what happens in the alkanes, is called sp3 hybridization. And that's basically because the blending together of orbitals occurs between an s orbital and three p orbitals so sp3 hybridization they all have the same energy and they're all identical in shape whereas before the single s orbital on its own would have a spherical shape and the three p orbitals originally had that lobe shape so now if we think about the carbon atoms in the alkanes, you can see that we've got four identical regions of space orbitals around the carbon atom with one unpaired electron in. And so therefore, if we bring our hydrogen in, there it is there with its one electron in its s orbital, you can see that it's possible to make a single covalent bond a shared pair of electrons. We've got the same here, the same here, and the same here. And you can see I've written a little bit of extra information up on the board now. These types of bonds, these covalent bonds that are formed here, are what we call sigma bonds. So you can actually refer to them as the word sigma or the Greek um, letter sigma. And what a sigma bond involves is the end-to-end -end overlap of the orbitals. 
So I'll demonstrate that now using electrons that I've drawn on my hand. So there's one electron there in one orbital and there's the other electron in another orbital. And so the orbitals need to overlap and form a covalent bond. So a very, very strong covalent bond called a sigma bond from the end to end overlap of the orbitals.